over the 20, past 25 years, we've really taken understanding, basic understanding of our genetic makeup and, and identified, um, for example, the impact of our genes on human health. Um, there are many examples of that, but I really think that the, the, um, um, the, the infrastructure here, the, the, the DNA of, of, of the Institute actually is in genetics. And the, um, the, the belief uh, and also proof now that um, our genes control an enormous amount about uh, our health and our outcomes. It's not all about genes, of course, it's the genes, our genes and the environment. But even so, um, the importance of identifying variants of genes um, uh, in patients and looking at their predispositions to various types of, of uh, uh, diseases, uh, I think is, is really Born fruit over, over the past 25 years. Um, so I think, you know, I see the, the Lundfeld very much as being on the forefront of, of um, analysis of, of the genetic makeup of people and exploiting that and, and, and using that information to, to drive better understanding of, of what diseases um, uh, are driven by, the fundamental processes, as well as by, uh, by helping us to illuminate the um, um, the, the processes such that it can be intervened with new drugs and new therapies. Um, it's, it's a really exciting area and I think it's, it's something which we've got a lot more to contribute to. Uh, in the past five years I've been um, director of the Lundenfeld. There have been many, many very proud mo moments. You know, I think the most the proudest was, was when I accompanied Tony Pawson to, um, to keep Kyoto where he accepted the Kyoto Prize. And, and that, that for me was, uh, it sort of encapsulated this, the career accomplishments of this fantastic scientist, Tony. Um, but also it was, it was the level of respect which was given to him and representing Lunenfeld at that event was, was, was phenomenal. It was, um, I've never seen so many tuxedos and, uh, um, uh, and, and uh, amazingly dressed people uh, at one, one event. But of course that was a celebration of an accomplishment, in this case a prize for Tony. But you know, day to day, it's, I get emails from our investigators about, you know, they're excited because they've had a, one of their publications accepted into a, a, great, paper, a great journal, or they've, uh, they've gotten a, a research grant uh, funded. Um, and you know, I live quite vicariously in that respect. I've got my own research lab, and, and we have our ups and downs, and it's, um, there have been lots of ups and, and, uh, and a few downs over the past five years. But it's actually um, the, the wonderful work of the Institute that comes more consistently and uh, so I may have to wait for my lab to, you know, for several weeks or months to get some, some good news but the, the Institute it seems like it's good news every other day. I think there'll be far better, far deeper understanding of uh, human illnesses and how we can prevent them um, and how we can intervene when, when they do occur. And that's largely driven by technology. There's been tremendous advancements in technology, in sequencing the genome quickly and cheaply, in seeing uh, using very, very powerful microscopes to understand the, the molecular processes which occur in all our cells. But it's more than that. It's, it's taking these the small pieces of information and integrating it into a, into a whole. Um, it's like a jigsaw puzzle. When you when you 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 start a jigsaw puzzle. And you can kind of see some bits coming together in, in a big picture, but it's only when it's about 40 or 50 percent complete that you really see what uh, what it's trying to tell you, what the picture is all about. And that's where we are in, in biomedical research. Although I think we're probably around 10 to 15 percent of, of the pieces being put together right now. And so what I'm expecting is over the next few years we'll really get a much better complexion, an idea of of, of what the um, of what human biology is all about, and and therefore. Um, how, how better to understand um, and to, to treat diseases. Donor support is, is fundamental to, um, to being able to, to achieve what we do. Um, for every dollar which is raised by the Foundation through the philanthropy of our donors, we're able to leverage that by about eight or nine times. And um, so a dollar raised by a donor or donated by a donor goes a long, long way. But it's more than that. It, it, this is sort of seed money. It, it helps people to explore new ideas. Um, they're often, we're very conservative and you can imagine with the, the rules of accountability, you want to be very, very careful about 
um, that a person has got a research idea which is is well scoped out and um, and justified um, before you want to give public dollars to, towards that. Um, that means though we, we tend to be very conservative and um, it's only when we've got half the picture already uh, uh, finished that we can we can apply for, for money to, to finish the rest. So donor funding helps to, to get projects started, it helps people to, to follow their noses. Uh, I think that's incredibly important. We, um, we absolutely rely on, on the philanthropy of, 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 uh, and the generosity of our donors. Um, and I would hope the donors can see that the results are very, very positive. The, um, uh, the success of the Institute is, is very much in, uh, as a consequence of their, their generosity and their belief in us that we can, we can make a difference.